Normally I do videos about computers, but this month YouTube sent me an email, September 2020, saying that I should get out of my comfort zone and find ways to change up my content. So this is probably not going to be anyone's favorite video on my channel, but I'll still be doing computer videos, and in fact you'll see more of this computer later in this video. And just in case you've noticed, the video quality is a little worse. This video is filmed with my iPad Mini 2, so the quality isn't the best, but it's still 1080p, and it's still gonna be better than this. This is a Sony Handycam from the 1990s. It's model CCD TR401E. As you can see, it doesn't have a pop-out LCD. Its recording medium format is 8mm tapes, and it's not Hi8 or Digital 8 or anything fancy like that. It doesn't have a date code on it, but the manual says copyright 1996, which sounds about right. This is pretty much the cheapest camcorder from a known brand like Sony that you could buy at the time. It wasn't too bad when it was new, but it's pretty basic. It has a 13 times variable zoom. It advertises that it can record down to 0.5 lux. The sticker didn't used to be crooked like this. This thing is too old to have night shot infrared night vision. I'm not sure what variable zoom means, but it's actually 13 times optical zoom. It used to have a lens cover, but it got broken off, so it's open all the time. It also has a lens thread, I believe. It came with a remote control, but I couldn't find it right now, but even the remote was pretty basic. You have this pretty nice orange indicator LCD, but it's not backlit. This backlight button is for backlight compensation in the video. There are various recording controls. The viewfinder, which is the only thing you can use in the camcorder itself, is black and white. We'll see it in a moment. Here's where the battery goes. This is the original battery that came with it. It's not an infolithium. This is the NP33, 6 volts, 800 milliamp hours, nickel cadmium battery. And I tried it recently, it only holds a charge for about 5 minutes. I did a few charge cycles, but it, it hardly improved, so, so this battery is pretty much dead. Here it advertises up to 5 hours battery life using an optional battery, NP98. Well, this one is the NP33, which I believe should have about an hour battery life when it's not this old. Ta-da! And the battery case that is supplied is this thing, EBP701. And it can house six AA batteries. So you could power your handycam using this thing as well. In fact, these days, if you can't find replacements for this, putting new AA batteries would probably give it decent battery life. Behind this door, it has some extra controls for Commander, that's the remote control sensor, beep and recording mode, standard play or long play, and the space to put a CR2025 backup battery for storing the date. On this side is where the tape goes, it says video camera recorder, the hand strap is still in pretty good condition. It has composite output with mono audio, because this only has a mono microphone. And RFU DC out. Not sure what that is. Is it for an RF output? Not sure. And has a microphone input with plug-in power. I already discharged this battery, so if I put it in, after following the instructions here, it says make sure you hear clicks twice, but... I can only hear one click and it's in there securely. I set it to camera mode and set the switch to standby which should turn it on. And nothing happens because the battery is dead. Nickel cadmium batteries, when you want to store them for a long time, you should discharge it fully. Unlike modern lithium-ion batteries, which you should have charged halfway or about 60% when you want to store them unused for a long time. Instead, we're going to power it using the AC adapter. This also doubles as the battery charger. Slide the battery in here. 
and you set the switch to charge but when you want to power the camcorder with this you set it to videotape recorder and on one end you've got this battery dongle which plugs in in place of the battery different voltage compared to the battery but it works anyway here's the information about the AC power adapter and it has a pretty nice dark gray cable and plug so I've just plugged it in, the green power light is on. Now we can plug this in. And let's flick the switch to standby. Nothing happens. As you can see the eject mechanism works. But the rest of the camera doesn't. Just give me a moment. Here we go. Just had to whack it a few times. And now it comes to life. There's the counter blinking and the missing tape indicator. I don't have any 8mm tapes right now. And it doesn't really matter because the image sensor is completely dead. Sorry for the flicker, that is not visible in real life, but even though there's no lens cap, it only shows a grey picture. If I press the record button now... It beeps because there's no tape, but sadly the image sensor doesn't work, so even though the camcorder works after some percussive maintenance, it's pretty much useless. If I could find some old tapes with something already recorded on it, I could play something back, but as it stands right now, it's pretty much useless. The viewfinder does still talk though. And if I zoom in... You can see the lens moving. Same thing if I zoom out. Here's the tape mechanism again. Looks pretty clean inside. Here there is also the um, wired remote jack and uh, the thing to remove the battery. So what can we do with this? Well, we can test the composite output. We'll use this cheap EasyCap USB video capture device with composite. It is stereo, but this thing is only mono, so we only need to plug in one audio cable. So I've just plugged in the camcorder to the EasyCap, which is plugged into the computer, and you can't see anything, can you? However, the camcorder is turned on and working, and has some display indicators that you can see there. Well, I'm going to press the title button. And there you see something appear. Hello. You cannot set custom titles as far as I know. You, you only have these preset titles. And they also appear here, of course. So let's go through those titles. I'm sure they are pretty useful. And even though the video is pretty much useless, the audio isn't. The microphone still works. So you've been hearing mono audio recorded from my iPad. Now you're hearing audio recorded from the Handycam. Still mono, of course. And you can judge for yourself how the audio quality is. And here is me talking a bit closer to the Handycam. Back to the iPad microphone. And also here there's a recording light doesn't blink. It's a red light, which I believe it turns on when it's recording, and when I was testing the battery, it would also blink when the battery was low, so I don't think I can demonstrate it now, but there's the light there. We can set it to playback mode, but like I said, I don't have any tapes to watch here. Here are the um, controls for the player. 
they should light up orange, but they're not for some reason. Maybe they don't light up when there's no tape, but I can just barely see them. They are stop, rewind, play, fast forward, and pause. So there we have it. The mostly broken Sony Handycam CCD TR41E Video 8 camcorder. After deciding to feature that Handycam in a video, I decided to feature other Sony electronics from the 90s. And here they are. A Walkman and a Discman. Again, I'm not sure about the dates of these exactly, but they are from the 90s. These maybe are a little bit older than the Handycam, but they're still low-end, but rather nice Sony devices with this nice black color. So this is the Walkman audio cassette player. It's model number WMEX10. The sticker is wearing off. It has a 3V DC input, but I don't have a power supply that would work here. Even though this is not very high-end, it's not the worst because it has a rewind button. So you don't have to turn the cassette over and fast forward when you want to rewind. There's the headphone jack. Switch for normal or chrome metal tapes and volume control. And here's where the batteries go. It takes two AA batteries. You just open it like this. And there's the tape mechanism inside. I had to replace the belt. I don't have an exact suitable replacement, so I just put a rubber band that fit. So I've just put the world's cheapest AA batteries. There are these really crappy extra star batteries. We'll see if it can power this Walkman, at least for a few seconds. And I've plugged in my Pringles mono speaker, which runs on three AAA batteries. And I'm going to test it with one of the cassette tapes from my childhood. Because even though I grew up in the early 2000s with Windows 95 and XP, I was still playing with cassette tapes quite often, dubbing things from CD and so on. And this is one of the tapes I recorded stuff on, which I still have. We'll see if there's something listenable on it. It's probably going to be children's music. It's almost certainly not going to play at the right speed because of the crappy batteries and imperfect belt I installed, which is just a rubber band. Let's see if we can rewind. Let's take advantage of this feature that not all portable cassette players have. How fast is it compared to fast forward? About the same. There's a lot of wow and flower, but it isn't playing that badly. Of course, not good enough for archiving, but it's listenable. And yeah, it's pretty cringy, but I was like seven years old, eight, nine, and probably not older than nine. Well, I think that's more than enough to show that this Walkman is pretty good. It cannot record, but for playback, you can't say it's bad. It works. Now let's remove these batteries before they start leaking and destroying this device. And let's try them in the disc, man. They probably won't stay on because I lost the battery cover. This is model D131. This battery doesn't want to stay. Probably have to hold it like this. Also, the part of the cover is broken, so I have to hold it with tape. But also, the switch that detects when it's open is broken, so I can run it open. Of course, no disk has Megabase, 
one bit digital to analog converter AVLS which doesn't say what it is I believe it stands for automatic volume leveling system and this is another pretty basic unit that does not have G protection or whatever it's called it doesn't have any kind of buffer for the CD you're playing so any bump or shaking it around will cause it to skip and even though I have some music CDs to test it with I'm gonna test it with this CDR which I burned some music onto of course it only supports audio CDs not mp3 CDs or stuff like that and of course this is a genuine banana park disc not a knockoff like those verbatims here there's the headphone jack volume control and line out jack the line out jack is at a fixed volume so you use it for speakers or amplifiers or stereo systems which have their own volume control but this speaker does not have a volume control so we'll plug it in to the headphone jack this battery doesn't stay on so I have to hold it from underneath I usually do not touch this side but this is not an important CD so I don't mind and it's barely moving the batteries are probably too weak so let's try to give it a little bit of help no it tried but that was still not enough so screw these batteries and we'll power it with the AC adapter It's still skipping. Just breathing near it causes it to skip. That's because the lens is pretty old. I cleaned it but it's extremely sensitive. Sometimes I have to hold it at an angle about like this otherwise it will skip on its own even with a perfectly clean scratchless CD. So now I'll stop it and show you the thing running while it's open. And I'll also show the intro function, which just plays 10 seconds of every track. Well that's lovely. I decided to record with a different device for a change and I've run out of space. So I cannot record with this iPad any further. Now I'm using my iPhone SE which has better quality but the battery is running out so I should make it quick. 
I'm just gonna stop it now. You can see the lens moving back. This disc man also has features like repeat. There are switches for bass boost and AVLS. And that's pretty much it. This was a look at three Sony multimedia devices from the 90s. Two for playing audio and one for recording video. Walkman, Discman and Handycam. This video is not sponsored by Sony. If it was, I would have something newer than this. The Handycam cannot record any useful video. The Walkman doesn't play very well because of the incorrect belt. And the Discman is really sensitive and skips extremely easily. So they are not useful anymore. But for me they are nice throwbacks to the 90s. So thank you for watching.